Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about urine-specific gravity. But if you didn't know, we have a website. It's called ninjanerd.org. Make sure you go to check it out because for every lecture that we put up here on YouTube, we have notes and illustrations for you guys to follow along and use while you watch these lectures. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. So when we talk about urine-specific gravity, we're going to be talking about a measurement that we use in order to measure the way that our urine is able to be basically concentrated or dilute. So we're going to be measuring what the kidney's ability is to conserve or excrete that, wor that water, right, or to make urine, essentially. So when we are measuring, we have an ex expected range that we're used to know, especially for nursing school. They really drive home the urine-specific gravity range. So we're going to quick write that down. Our urine-specific gravity typically is anywhere from 1.0101 to 1.030. You're going to notice it's a really small range, right? A really small amount of numbers can fit in between there. And the reason this is important, and it's really minute, is because anywhere lower than this, right, is going to be really close to one. Anywhere higher than this, well, any number we can pick higher than this is going to show us something else. So before we get into specifically what does all this mean, I want you to kind of understand very basically what urine-specific gravity is, because I think people kind of miss this part, and then this test really doesn't make sense to us. And this is something that we utilize specifically in our urine analysis to be able to determine what's going on with our patients, right? So let's quickly walk it back a step here. When we're talking about urine-specific gravity, we're really measuring urine and also its relevance to water, right? So water has a specific gravity of one, distilled H2O, is somewhere in one. And then we just set up here, urine is anywhere from 1.010 to 1.030, okay? So if we're looking at this, right, and we see a patient who is going to have anywhere in this range of urine that's considered normal, great. So we can either have decreased or increased. So again, let's think about water. If water is one and anything less than 1.010, is considered decrease, it means that we're getting closer to water, right? So we have some water molecules in here. And when we're talking about decreased, we're looking at something that maybe has a little more water, right? So this urine in this patient has a little more water in it, so it's a little more dilute, right? It's decreased, it's closer to water. On the other side, if it's increased, if it's higher than this, right? So on this range, if it's increased, then we are going to have maybe some less water, right? But that's not the only thing that's in urine. We could also have salt, right? We all know about sodium, right? So we got sodium. And you're going to notice that within the decreased amount, we have more water molecules to what's going on in there versus the increase, it's going to have more stuff in it, right? And remember, when we talk about urine-specific gravity, I want you to think of it as like a density or a weight, right? It's a measurement, it's a force of something being pulled on it. So if it's increased, it means there's more stuff in it, versus decreased means less stuff, closer to water, just being plain old H2O. So the way I like to think of it is decreased is more dilute water, right? Where increased is more concentrated. So we have decreased urine-specific gravity. What does that mean if it's more dilute? What's, what's in it? What's, there's more water, right? Right? So it's this person has more water. So maybe they've taken in a lot more water and there's more coming out. What is something that can help us urinate often, right? Diuretics, a medication. So either they're urinating frequently, with large volumes. So this could be someone like on a diuretic. It could be somebody who has a decrease in their anti-diuretic hormone. So they're just peeing more often, right? Now on the other side, let's talk about a concentrated urine. So when we talk about a person with an increased urine-specific gravity who's got something concentrated, they probably have less water, right? Because we talked about it up here. We have less molecules of water up here. We have more concentrate, more stuff in it. So if someone has less water, what is a word that we use in nursing? That is dehydrated. So this patient 
could be dehydrated, right? And that typically has to do with fluid loss or volume loss. So what are some things that could cause that? Could be vomiting, right? Could be diarrhea. Could be many other things that are going on with this patient. And because they're losing these fluids, they are now having a more concentrated or urine, which is an increased urine-specific gravity. So I hope this video helped clear it up for you what urine-specific gravity means and what it does for our patient. Hope you got something from this. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.